Hello viewers, welcome back to my channel. In this session, I shall be discussing a scheduling algorithm and the name of the algorithm is Priority Scheduling. In the previous session, I have explained regarding the round robin scheduling algorithm. Now in this session, I shall explain you about the priority scheduling. Priority scheduling can be of both the types, preemptive priority scheduling and non-preemptive. So let us see these scheduling algorithms one after the other and moreover, now, uh, just look at the term priority. Priority, every one of us are very much familiar with the with this particular word. We know that we need to give more importance to a particular uh, activity or event when then we say that, yes, for this event, for this activity, we are having a higher priority. When If you see the round robin scheduling there, the system has treated all the processes equally important. And in round robin scheduling, uh, the main criteria was what time quantum. So since the system has treated all the processes equally important, same amount of uh, time has to be used by all the processes to get their task done. Normally priority is why we have to give importance to certain processes. Definitely in the system what has happened, see in the very beginning I said processes can be of two types, user level and kernel level processes. To make the system functionality, we, there are certain processes that are getting executed and whatever processes are what are uh, started from the user side, those are the user processes. Now, any point of time, when it, if at all a particular process which is working for the system is competing with the process, uh, with the user level process, then a process that is working for the system should be given higher priority than the user level process. Once again, suppose if all the processes are working for the system, they are competing with each other. There also we need to see which important task it, a particular process is carrying out. So that process should get what higher priority. So this is how the priorities for all the processes are decided. Okay, now let us see in the system. See normally what will be the type of question for priority scheduling. Now with this introduction of priority scheduling, let us see a numerical on priority scheduling. The numerical says that there are uh, consider a set of seven processes. So, based on the request of few students who have asked to take more number of processes for numericals, that's the reason. Previously, round robin, I have taken uh, four uh, processes in, in the numerical. Now, I have increased here. So, uh, the number of processes are seven. So, consider a set of seven processes. Now, what will be the what will be given in the question is normally the arrival time, the burst time of the processes. The process ID will always be there. Now, one more column, one more values, one more column will be given here and that column is called as the priority. That means the priorities for all these processes are also given. But how to find out which process has got which priority? Because the priorities are given in numbers, in the question itself they would have indicated like this, higher the number, higher number indicates higher priority. So whatever is given in the question, you need to follow that. So normally in the question, the priority, uh, this one will also be given, which process has to be treated on top priority. So in this example, they have given higher number indicates higher priority. That's the reason I have written here H here against which number 12. 12 is the highest here in this particular column. Lower is L2. If it is given in the question, lower number indicates higher priority, then you have to write H here. And for this, you have to write L and then start the uh, complete what scheduling of all the different processes using the GAN chart. So let us start with the very first thing here. Hope uh, it is visible to you all. Let me start writing from here. So first we'll write here zero always the GAN chart. Okay, start writing from zero, then what you have to do is you have to schedule a process here, but which process will you schedule because it is given that higher the number indicates higher priority. Here process P6, okay, let me write word P also, P6 has got highest priority 12. So can we schedule that? We cannot schedule because the arrival time of the process P6 is 5. You have started with zero. Process P6 has not arrived only. Then you just go behind any other yes. Below this, like the next uh, lower number is 10, it will be arriving at 3. The next lower number is 8, it will be arriving at 4. So this, these processes are not available only to schedule. What you will do, you will just see arrival time, process P1. So no other go, you have to schedule process P1 only. 
P1 has got the lowest priority, but it is getting scheduled first because it has arrived and there are no other processes available. So you will schedule uh, P1. And as I said, priority scheduling can be of two types, preemptive and non-preemptive. So the first, uh, for the first time, we'll see the non-preemptive type. So you can write down here. Criteria is priority for this scheduling algorithm and the mode of operation is non-preemptive. Non-preemptive becomes a quite simpler. Once you assign the process, you will make this process, okay, get its task completely. So here P1 has got the burst time 4, it will okay, end at 4. Next is at by 4, which are the processes available, you have to check. So by 4, 4 arrival time is here up till P5. Up till P5, all the processes are available, okay, at time 4. Because why you are checking at time 4 is P1 has ended its job at time 4. And at time 4, you have to see how many processes are available. P2 is there, P3, P4, P5. Now among all these processes, which is having the highest priority. So among all these 4, 6, 10 and 8, you can see higher number is 8, 10. So this process P4 is having the higher priority. So what you will do is you will schedule P4 here. Moreover P1 you have completed. So we will put a tick here for P1. Now P4 also we have scheduled. And P4 arrive burst time is how much? It is uh, 5. So P4 will end its, end its job at 9. P4 you have completed. Then by time unit, okay, by this particular time 9, uh, how many processes are available? Highest arrival time is 6. Here it is 9. So almost all processes are available here in the system. The job becomes quite simpler now. You have to just see processes with higher uh, uh, priority start scheduling one after the other. So out of now remaining is which one? Uh, P1 and P4 you have completed. Fine. So I will put a tick better here only. P1 you have completed and P4 you have completed. Now remaining is what? 8, 12, 9, 6 and 4. These are the priorities. In this 12 is having the highest priority. So you will schedule P6. P6 is having the burst time 4. So it will end its job at 13. After this P6, P6 you have completed. Next uh, priority is with the process P7. So P7 has got the priority 9. Its burst time is 6. So it will end its job at 9, 19. Okay, 13 plus 6, 19. So this one is also completed. P5 will be the next one. See, look here. The priorities are 4, 6 and 8. Highest is 8. So P5 will start. P5 worst time is only 1. It will end its job at 20. Next is only these two processes remaining. The next one will be P3 it has got priority 6. Its burst time is 3. So it will end its job at 23. After that the last one is P2. Okay. So P2, uh, what is the burst time for P2? 2 units. It needs only 2 units of time. So it will end its job at 25. So these are the different times at which all the processes have got scheduled. P1 has completed its job at 4. Write down here. See P1 has. P2 has completed at 25. P3 has completed at 23. Then P4 at 9. P5 at 20. Then P6 at 13. P7 has completed at 19. Okay. Then comes what? Turnaround time. Turnaround time is always completion time minus of arrival time. So same procedure you start now. Fill in the values. Turnaround time is completion time is here. Arrival time. Subtract arrival time from completion time. So uh, 4 minus 0. 4. 24 minus 1. Sorry 25 minus 1. 24. 23 minus 2. 21. 9 minus 3. 6. 20 minus 4, 16, 13 minus 5, 8, 19 minus 6, 30. So you add up all these things. Once you add up, you will get 92. Okay. The waiting time is always equal to what? Turnaround time minus of burst time. Here. Where is the turnaround time? Turnaround time you have computed just now for each of the processes. And waiting time is... 
sorry, uh, turnaround time minus burst time here. 4 minus 4, 0. 24 minus 2, 22. 21 minus 3, 19. 6 minus 5, 1. 16 minus 1, 15. 8 minus 4, 13 minus 6. Check once again, 19 minus, 21 minus of 3, it will be 18. Once you write all these values, you add up all the values of the waiting time and total waiting time you will get it as 67. This is non preemptive scheduling algorithm. So the response time becomes very simple here to cal compute because the response time is equal to what? The waiting time in case of non preemptive. Why we are saying response time is equal to uh, waiting time is because response time is what the time at which the process got the CPU for the first time, okay, minus of its arrival time. Here, when we say the process got CPU for the first time, in non preemptive, it will be first and last time only because the process P1 once assigned, it will complete its job and it will exit. It will not come in future again. So, whatever is there, the waiting time, that waiting time becomes what? Equal to response time in case of non preemptive scheduling. So you can write down here. Okay. This is how you have to compute the values. Now write down the average values also because in the problem statement they would have asked. Consider set of seven processes with the priorities given. Fine. And they would have asked you to find out the average turnaround time. Average waiting time. Something like this. Average. Turn around time and write down. Unit is definitely what? If it is given in milliseconds, the problem statement they would have mentioned that the arrival time and burst time is given in milliseconds. That time you can write down this also as milliseconds. And uh, here I would like to tell one more thing. Sometimes what will happen is the priority of a number will be same for more than one process. That time what you need to check if the priority of two processes are same then you need to check what which process has arrived earlier. So you schedule that process first. That means you are going to check the arrival time of those processes. In case if the arrival time is also same then you have to check what the process ID of the numbers. Then process ID of the processes. Definitely process ID will ne never be same. So this is how you have to solve the numerical here using the process scheduling algorithm. Hope this session is useful to you all. Thank you. And also I would like to request my audience to please like, share and subscribe my channel. Take care. Bye-bye.